Welcome to Alaska Weather, this is Eric Holloway with the National Weather Service for October 17, 2022. A couple options for you to get another forecast or further, further refine your weather search. 1-800 number gets you into a menu system and out on the World Wide Web at weather.gov slash Alaska. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please email us at the email list at the bottom of the page. For the watch warnings and advisories out, we do have a wind advisory for portions of the eastern Alaska range, and that's out until 7 a.m. on Tuesday. Otherwise, we just have a special weather statement out for the, the Juneau office, and they are expecting a strong hurricane force low to come into the Gulf of Alaska, strong winds and heavy rain expected for portions of southeast Alaska for the middle of the week. And they are looking for winds gusting up to 50 to 60 miles per hour possible late Tuesday night through Wednesday as the low moves into the Yukon. But otherwise, what do we have on the satellite image this afternoon? You can see some rain and maybe some snow showers with a weakening trough pushing through the panhandle. Otherwise, some lingering snow showers, especially along the west coast and portions of the Alaska range with some buildups there. Otherwise, you can see the next system coming into view there in the just south of the Gulf of Alaska. We do have that weak trough out there on the west coast driving a limited amount of mixed precipitation and some snow showers along the northwest coast and in the Brooks Range. Otherwise, some rain showers down the Panhandle, Alaska Range, and um, portions of the northern Gulf. For tonight's weather, looking at that low to come into view, 966 millibar low there with moderate rain associated with that and a cluder front. Otherwise, some lingering snow showers in portions of the Panhandle and along the Alaska Range and up through the Northwest and Seward Peninsula. Otherwise, a low out there in eastern Russia, 960 millibar low there with another cluder front. And then for Tuesday's weather, that low moves further north. Pretty good winds associated with that. Heavy rain expected in the panhandle and lower elevations of the northern gulf. Snow showers as you move further inland. Otherwise, some snow showers along the Alaska Range and into the Brooks Range and North Slope. And lastly, in that included front moves further east into the Bering Sea with moderate rain through much of that area and down through the Aleutians. For Wednesday's weather, that front out there in the Bering Sea makes it towards the southwest coast with some moderate rain and mixed precipitation through Bristol Bay region and some moderate to heavy rain in the Alaska Peninsula. Otherwise, snow showers and rain showers through eastern Russia into the Bering Sea. And that low in the Gulf now weakening to a 998 millibar low as it moves into Canada with some snow showers across the interior and some lingering rain across the panhandle. For low temperatures, looking at 55 there at Ketchikan, 49 in Sitka, Haines 45, Yakutat 43, here in Anchorage 37, 37 in Kenai, Homer 40, 43 in Kodiak, then we'll have Ileana 35, King Salmon 31, and up there in McGrath 26. Then for high temperatures Tuesday afternoon, 57 in Ketchikan, 55 in Sitka, 51 in Juneau, 52 in Haines, 50 in Yakutat, 45 in Anchorage, Talkeetna 46, 46 in Homer, 48 in Homer, 46 in Kenai, I'm sorry, 51 in Kodiak, 39 in McGrath, and 45 in King Salmon. For low temperatures Wednesday morning, looking at 52 in Ketchikan, 51 in Sitka, 50 in Juneau, 44 in Yakutat, 39 in Valdez, 37 in Anchorage, 34 in Talkeetna, 
39 in Homer, 42 in Kodiak, King Sam at 30, and McGrath 28. High temperatures Wednesday afternoon, 55 in Ketchikan, 53 in Sitka, 52 in Juneau, 49 in Yaktat, 30s, I'm sorry, 44 in Anchorage, 42 in Talkeetna, 47 in Homer, 45 in Kodiak, 44 in King Salmon. F moving up through the interior and north slope, low temperatures for Tuesday morning, 26 there in Fairbanks, Eagle, 26, Fort Yukon, 18, 13 in Arctic Village, and Anuktuvik Pass, 18, Ukiavik, 21, 28 there in Point Hope, 32 in Nome, and 27 in Galena. Four high temperatures Tuesday afternoon, 40 in Eagle, 30 in Fort Yukon, 38 there in Fairbanks, Anuktuvik Pass, 30, 26 in Ukiavik, 35 in Port Hope, Nome, 39, 35 in Galena, 37 in Tanana. For low temperatures, Wednesday morning, 29 in Fairbanks, 28 in Eagle, Fort Yukon, 23, Anuktuvik Pass, 16, 21 in Barrow, Ukiavik, 28 in Point Hope, 31 in Nome, 27 in Galena, 27 in Tanana. For high temperatures Wednesday afternoon, looking at 40 for Eagle, 33 in Fort Yukon, 39 in Fairbanks, 26 in Activic Pass, 29 in Ukiavik Barrow, and 35 in Point Hope, 39 in Nome, 34 in Galena, 37 in Tanana. Then down through the southwest, Alaska Peninsula Aleutians for low temperatures Tuesday morning, looking at 29 in Bethel, Antioch, 28, 32 in Dillingham, 36 in Cold Bay, 39 in Dutch Harbor, 44 in Shimia, St. Paul, 34. For high temperatures Tuesday afternoon, 39 in Bethel, 37 in Antioch, 42 in Dillingham, Cold Bay, 47. Dutch Harbor 46, 49 in Shimia, 44 in St. Paul, and 35 up there in Shibunga. Low temperatures Wednesday morning, looking at 29 for Bethel, 29 in Agniac, and then 29 in Dillingham, 37 in Cold Bay, 40 in Dutch Harbor, 42 in Shimia, St. Paul 37 in Shibunga, 32. For high temperatures Wednesday afternoon, 39 in Bethel, 38 in Antioch, 42 in Dillingham, 50 in Cold Bay, Dutch Harbor, 51, Shimia, 45, 47 in St. Paul, and 39 in Sabunga. For CPC's 6 to 10 day temperature outlook for October 23rd through October 27th, looking at pretty good signal for some warmth down through much of the southwest and into the Alaska Peninsula with near normal conditions expected through portions of the north slope and in through the interior with below normal tilts across much of the panhandle and in the southeast interior. For CPC's 6 to 10 day precipitation outlook for October 23rd through October 27th, looking at above normal tilts across much of the southwest centered down there and that extends up into the interior and north slope with that trough expected over the Bering Sea and below normal tilt slightly for the panhandle near normal conditions along the northern gulf there. For CPC's 8 to 14 temperature outlook for October 25th through October 31 looking at slight signal there down through the southwest and Bristol Bay region and extending out into the Alaska Peninsula with above normal tilts there centered over the Kuskokwim Delta into the Bristol Bay region otherwise near normal tilts across much of the interior and into the North Slope and Seward Peninsula otherwise but lower normal signals across much of the southeast interior and extending up into the upper Yukon otherwise we'll see some below normal tilts down through Yakutat, Juneau, Ketchikan, and Sitka through much of the panhandle. Then for the precipitation outlook for October 25th through October 31st, we're going to be looking at some above normal tilts centered over the lower Yukon and Kusukwim area with the likelihood of a 
trough just out there in the Bering Sea, driving some of this above normal tilt and above normal precipitation. And we also see some above normal precipitation odds for much of the panhandle. And that extends over into the south central area with Anchorage and much of the southeast interior being above normal possibly for the end of the month. And we're also going to be see some heat as well, especially in the 6 to 10 day, but also extending in the 8 to 14 time frame. But also we'll see some very much soggy conditions most likely. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Taking a look at the aviation forecast starting with flying weather on Tuesday. Morning, looking at IFR conditions for the southern end of the panhandle. Also IFR conditions through portions of the mainland and up through the northwest coast and over into the Arctic coast as well as portions of the western Aleutians. Also some marginal conditions down through south central and into the southeast interior. For Tuesday afternoon, looking at some IFR conditions there in the Gulf region, some VFR conditions through portions of South Central, otherwise some IFR conditions through the much of the mainland, and marginal conditions out on the North Slope, and some IFR conditions with the next system coming into the Aleutians. They're spreading into portions of the Bering Sea. For Wednesday morning, looking at some scattered IFR conditions through the Brooks Range and down through the interior, otherwise some marginal conditions through the Yukon Basin and into portions of South Central and into the Southeast interior, otherwise some IFR conditions out there in the Bering Sea and down then to the Eastern Aleutians, otherwise some lingering IFR conditions down there in the Gulf of Alaska and some marginal conditions out through the panhandle for Wednesday afternoon looking at some IFR conditions spreading through much of the North Slope and Arctic Coast otherwise some IFR conditions reaches the West Coast and YK Delta and some IFR conditions out through through the Southeast Interior and up in Tanana Basin and then some IFR conditions in the Northern Panhandle into the Northeast Gulf Coast and some VFR conditions through much of the Brooks Range and West portions of the west coast. For past conditions on Tuesday, Anaktuvik for when looking at IFR conditions with marginal conditions on the north entrance. Same for Adigan, Lake Clark and Merrill looking for IFR improving to marginal and rainy much the same there. Windy look like marginal conditions throughout the day on Tuesday and same for Isabel and Mentessa Pass looking at marginal decreasing to IFR during the day, and for Tanita looking at marginal and portage marginal improving to VFR conditions. You could also see some VFR conditions out there in the west entrance during the day as well. For Chilkoot and White looking for marginal decreasing to, I'm sorry, v VFR conditioning decreasing to marginal conditions in the Chilkoot and White Pass. For freezing levels Tuesday morning, surface freezing level down through portions of the southwest coast over into south central and out through the northern portions of the panhandle otherwise elevated freezing levels basically starting in the southeast interior and elevating through the panhandle otherwise some elevated freezing levels out there in the western bering sea for icy conditions on tuesday looking at above 7000 feet for isolated moderate in portions of much of the mainland and above 4,000 feet with some considerable moderate in areas of the Alaska Peninsula and Eastern Aleutians into the Bristol Bay area. Otherwise, some no icing expected through much of the panhandle and into south central Alaska. For the jet stream on Tuesday, we'll see an vertically stacked lows here out there in the Kamchatka Peninsula and into the Gulf of Alaska, but otherwise strong jet in coming into the eastern Gulf of Alaska with 135 knots there south of that low. Otherwise, some southwesterly winds 65 to maybe even 95 there in, in northeast Gulf Coast. Otherwise, southwesterly south winds through much of the mainland up to 70 there. 
and otherwise uh, northerly winds down through the eastern Bering Sea and west coast with anywhere between 85 and 95, even up to 125 as you get down to the Alaska Peninsula. For 9,000 foot winds, looking at that vertically stacked low, counterclockwise low, southerly winds coming into the panhandle, 70 to 60 knots there, light variable through the mainland and that other low out there in the Kamchatka Peninsula driving anywhere between 60 and 80 knots out there. 3,000 foot winds looking at for Tuesday, counterclockwise flow, so the winds coming into the panhandle in the Gulf with 60 to anywhere between 60 and 65 coming in there and southerly winds out through the central bearing anywhere up to 85. Isolated surface up to 6,000 feet for turbulence. Space weather affects technologies. As conditions develop, we put out alerts, warnings, and watches to our customers so they can take action. The Space Weather Prediction Center has had a long-standing relationship with the power industry, so they've been aware that solar storms, the geomagnetic storm piece of that, can affect the operation of systems and induce extra currents and loads on those systems that can either trip those systems offline or, or in the worst of cases, cause damage. That relationship goes back for several decades, in fact. A big incident in 1989 where part of Quebec was tripped offline that affected something like six million customers for about nine hours. I think that really raised the awareness in the power industries. When we get the alert, we watch the grid and start looking for issues. Are we seeing a decline in voltage? Are we seeing equipment failures? And we readjust the system to try to mitigate those problems, try to keep the lights on and keep it from going out. So we're averaging about 500, 550 kilometers per second. If we didn't have this early warning, we wouldn't see it until our sensor saw it. Getting more information quicker and faster before the storm hits, not during the storm, is a big improvement. In the long term, I think what we need and what we're moving toward the U.S. as a whole is better modeling, fully understanding this phenomenon, understanding how it would impact specific systems. Rather than actually experiencing a storm, we can simulate storms in our software and see what the impact is. We try to get ahead of it. We always plan that if there's an outage, how can we keep the lights on? What's the best process to prevent it? In the end, five, ten years from now, there's going to be a whole mix of operational procedures driven by what we do on prediction and warning. And then there also will probably be some level of hardware controls to ensure the reliability of the grid. Space weather affects technologies. As conditions develop, we put out alerts, warnings, and watches to our customers so they can take action. There's different types of impacts on communication systems. And the HF, we call the high frequency, which is that band of communications, 3 to 30 megahertz. But it's a very important band of radio communication because it's used widespread. It's used, for example, by the airlines. HF radio is most commonly used for position reporting when you're going across the ocean airspace, which is devoid of, of radar. And, and ATC can't see you, so you're, it's up to you to report your position and your altitude and your speed. HF works great most of the time, except during a big flare. And during a big flare, that HF communication capability could be gone within a minute or two. So as soon as we see something happening in there, or we see a flare, it's one of the first things we do is alert the aviation community, hey, big flare, HF's gonna be impacted. Once we know that there's an event going on, 
then the aviation industry and the airlines can react to that. They can alter their routes over the poles. They can lower the altitudes that they're flying at, or maybe decide not to fly at all in the interest of their passenger safety. So that's just one example of how EHF is used, but the emergency response community will use it a lot too. It's one of their primary backups. When you've lost connectivity between certain government agencies, it gives you that long-range coverage to talk from out of state to federal governments or from the FEMA locations to the state uh, emergency operations centers. So if you've got a big hurricane impact in the coastline, whatever big city, uh, we've got the cell towers down and whatnot, we've got emergency communication folks in there. Those folks are very familiar with space weather and how it impacts their systems. Here in recent years, it was used during Katrina when we had a lot of communications outages down there. It was also used during Hurricane Ike. There was an outage of the telephone circuits with the Texas State Emergency Office, so it was used in both of those situations. So when we talk about backup, especially for the airlines, typically they'll have SATCOM, so that'll be satellite communication. The satellite technology that emergency responders use could be GPSs, could be satellite phones, satellite data terminals. Space weather events can impact SATCOMs. The impact can range from a nuisance to loss of a spacecraft. So we will give them the heads up. If we have space weather events, flares, whatnot, they need to know what's impacting their systems. Situational awareness is key. Time is of essence to these folks. Again, it's life and death. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Taking a look at the marine forecast, starting with the ice edge, do have some low concentrations or young ice there along the Beaufort Sea coast. Otherwise, down through the Chukchi Sea coast and north side of the Seward Peninsula, we do have some lower concentrations of ice there as well. For Tuesday's marine forecast for southeast, for the inside waters, winds generally from a variable direction 15 to 20 with seas as high as 12 feet. Also some gusts of 40 there in the Stevens Passage area. Otherwise, we'll see some small craft advisors there on Tuesday. For the outside waters, winds generally from a southeasterly direction 40 to 45 with seas as high as 24 feet, so look for gales there on Tuesday. For Wednesday's marine forecast, inside waters looking at winds generally from the south 25 to 35 with seas as high as 7 feet. For the Gulf area, winds generally from a south easterly or southwesterly 45 to 50 with seas as high as 38 feet. So look for storm force winds there on Wednesday. For Tuesday's marine forecast for south central, winds generally from a Easterly direction across the Gulf region, 45 to 50 with seas as high as 19 feet. So look for storm force there on Tuesday. And then for the Cook in the region, winds generally from the north at 25 to 35 with seas as high as 11 feet there in the Kamishak Bay region. For Wednesday's marine forecast, for south central in the Gulf area, winds generally from a westerly direction, 30 to 40. So look for small craft advisories there on Wednesday. And then for the Cook Inlet region, winds generally from a westerly direction 15 to 25 with seas as high as 7 feet. For Tuesday's marine forecast for Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island, winds generally around the Kodiak Island from a northerly direction 35 to 50 with seas as high as 20 feet. So look for storm, gale, or storm force winds there on Tuesday. And for the south side of Alaska Peninsula, winds generally from a northwesterly direction up to 30 with seas as high as 8 feet. And the north side looking at winds generally from the north at 20 to 30 with seas as high as 11 feet. Small craft advisories there are possible on Tuesday. For Wednesday's marine forecast, around Kodiak Island, winds generally from, generally from a west direction at 25 to 35 with seas as high as 35 feet. So look for small craft advisory there on Wednesday. And then for the south side of the Alaska Peninsula, winds generally from a southwesterly direction up to 40 with seas as high as 15 feet. 
So look for gales there on Wednesday and for the north side of Alaska Peninsula winds generally from a southerly direction 25 to 40 with seas as high as 11 feet and again look for gales there on Wednesday. For Tuesday's marine forecast for Lucian chain for the central and eastern chain looking at winds generally from a westerly direction 25 to 40 with seas as high as 9 feet so look for small craft or gales there on Tuesday and then for the western Aleutian winds generally from a southerly direction 15 to 50 to 55 knots with seas as high as 23 feet so look for storm force there on Tuesday and then for Wednesday winds generally from a westerly direction 30 to 45 with seas as high as 16 feet south of on Alaska so again, look for gale force winds there on Wednesday. For Tuesday's marine forecast for the west coast, looking at winds generally from a variable direction, southerly as you get into the central bearing, but otherwise northerly as you get into the eastern bearing and down through Bristol Bay region with winds anywhere between 10 and 45 with seas as high as 13 feet. So look for gales out there on Tuesday and then for Wednesday. Winds generally from a southerly direction, anywhere between 15 and 35, with seas as high as 17 feet there. So look for gales there on Wednesday. For Tuesday's marine forecast for the Arctic coast, winds generally from a northerly direction there along the Beaufort Sea coast to 15, with seas as high as 5 to 7 feet. Down through the Chukchi Sea coast, winds generally from a easterly direction 10 to 15, with seas as high as 7. And down through the Bering Strait, winds generally from the north at 15 with seas as high as 5 feet. And then for Wednesday, winds generally from a easterly direction along the Beaufort Sea coast up to 20 with seas as high as 4 feet. And down through the Chukchi Sea coast and Bering Strait, winds generally from an easterly direction 25 to 30 with seas as high as 14 just south of Bering Strait. Then for the surf. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1 800 WX Brief for a formal pre flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.